At one time, I definitely was an archer and olive truther. The notebooks, so many notebooks. The acrylographs, the calliographs, the washi tape, the leather bags, the sub boxes. And although I'm not as hardcore as I once was, when I heard that they had a fountain pen and some inks come out in this latest sub box, my ears perked up a little bit. And now that I've used it for about two weeks or so, I have some thoughts. Hey there, Julia here. Welcome or welcome back to another video. And today I'm reviewing the inaugural Archer and Olive fountain pen that came in their March 2024 subscription box. I was both cautious and curious whenever I heard about it. So I'm hoping that this video will be helpful if you are curious as well and didn't want to spring for the entire box. I do want to say that I am an affiliate with Archer and Olive. You can use my code ROYAL10 for anything over there, but that doesn't affect at all my opinion on the fountain pen or the inks. This will be my honest opinion. So yeah, let's head over to the desk and check it out. Okay, so this is the Archer and Olive fountain pen. And let's talk about first the look and feel of this pen. I do wanna say I really enjoy the color and it definitely feels on brand for Archer and Olive. It's a very nice gray green with gold trim. I was a little nervous when I opened this up and saw a metal grip. This is totally just a preference thing, but typically I don't like metal grips, but this one does have a brushed metal grip here and I found that to be more comfortable than like straight up metal. What happens is for me with just a metal grip section here, my hands get sweaty and this gets slippery or, you know, sometimes it's really cold to the touch and it just doesn't feel cozy in my hands. But I found this to be a nice little workaround for that. Even with the cap off, it looks like a really elegant pen. And I do like, especially for people that this may be their first fountain pen, I like that it's a snap cap because typically when you have threaded pens where you have to, you know, turn it to get it to stay closed, a lot of people don't like that. That's a turn off just because it takes a little longer to access the pen. The shape itself is pretty elegant and I have no complaints there. But let's talk about the way that Archer and Olive chose to brand this thing. You guys know that I am a graphic designer. Logos and branding are kind of my bread and butter and so I have to talk about it. So one of the first things that I noticed and kind of was a turn off right off the back was the Archer and Olive logo on the clip there. I think with a lot of other fountain pens, there is a little more subtlety in the branding. I don't, I don't know. I just feel like the clip wasn't a common place for branding. So let's look at a Pelican. Here we don't have anything that says Pelican on the clip. Instead, it's pretty small on the trim of the cap and they use the finial to use what's called a logo mark here. So kind of their symbol they put on the finial. And I just feel like Arch and Olive missed a perfect opportunity to put that ampersand right there on the finial, leave this blank, and then maybe put Archer and Olive around the cap here. Even if we look at a Waterman, this pen, because it's cigar shaped, doesn't have a finial really. It kind of has this bottom situation going on, but it doesn't have a top finial. But they put their logo mark really small here on the clip and then Waterman along the pen cap here. Same thing with the Twisbees. Logo mark on the finial, nothing on the clip, Twisby 
on the pen cap here. The only example of just my quick glance at common pens that I found another pen brand on the clip is Pilot. And that's probably because Pilot is a really short word. It doesn't take up much room at all on the clip and they don't have a logo mark. So even with Sailors, which are super popular and they have really iconic finials here with their logo mark, just the anchor, nothing on the clip, Sailor, Japan. So just some comparison there. I just immediately found it a bit odd that they didn't use this finial space and that they opted to instead put the whole name and the logo mark on the clip. And I don't know, even though it's all in one place, it just kind of feels a little overdone to me. And you'll see a theme with my thoughts here is that I just don't think enough research, like market industry research, went into this fountain pen. But just keep that in mind. I'm going to say it a few times, I'm sure, but this was just case number one. So let's look at the size of this pen. I'm just gonna compare it to some common pens that you find out in the fountain pen world. This is a Twisby Eco. This is a Lamy Safari, an Esterbrook Esty, and this is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. So you can see it's about the size, the same size as the Twisby Eco and the Lamy Safari, which are really great beginner fountain pens as well. But let's let's also see it with everything uncapped. So yeah, uncapped tells a little bit different of a story. It's quite a bit shorter than our Twisby Eco, a little closer to the Lamy Safari, and just a little bit longer than the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Also, speaking of going back to branding, what is this pen called? It just can't be called the Arch and Olive Fountain Pen. You know, this is the Twisby Eco. This is the Lamy Safari. This is the Esterbrook SD in Botanical Gardens. You know, so I just, again, the research wasn't there. I just feel like they should have had this presentation of a name in a colorway, whether or not this is the only fountain pen that there is going to be for Arch and Olive. There should be a naming convention like ready to go just because that's such a big part of the fountain pen industry and the community. So yeah, I do have the inks here as well and we will talk about them, swatch them a little bit later, but I did use the combo for a couple of weeks. I used this pen in my planner. I also used it for long form writing, also for planning other videos. So like a brain dump situation, like kind of like fast and furious, <laughs> fast and furious writing. And I also took it with me on a work trip. From there, I cleaned it out and put another ink in it, Diamine Salamander. And so let's take a look at that and then we'll come back and take a closer look at the pen's performance. So I just happened to be filming whenever I ran out of ink. And I wasn't sure what happened at first, but sure enough, I was out of ink and so I decided it was the perfect opportunity to clean the pen and do that on camera as well. And it was really easy to clean, especially with a bulb syringe. I think I pumped it through there maybe two times. The converter was also easy to clean though the sliding mechanism may be a little confusing for beginners. Okay, so I've cleaned out the Arch and Olive fountain pen and I think I am going to ink it up with Diamine Salamander just because I know that's a super good well flowing ink. And so we're about to hit the road to Tucum Carry for a few days. And so I do wanna bring this along and see how it writes with a different ink brand and just test it out in that way. As I'm inking up the pen again, I do wanna report back and say that it worked just fine on the road, of course, and I really like the Diamine ink in it. I didn't 
use it much after coming back from the trip for no particular reason. I just liked my other pens better, I think. Okay, we're back and we're gonna take a closer look at the pen's performance. So a very important part about the fountain pen is the nib and the nib can really make all the difference in the world when it comes to writing experience. And so on this one, we do have a dual toned nib, which is really pretty to have the silver and the gold coloring on there. I do wish that we had some kind of markings on here. I am assuming that this is a fine nib, but yeah, I just wish we had some sort of marking on there as that is common practice even, let's see. The Sailor, this is a medium fine and you can always kind of figure out what you're writing with here. And we don't get that with this pen. So I definitely wonder about that choice. I did look up the maker of these nibs and the nibs are by Wing Song, which is a Chinese company that is known for highly affordable pens and dupes of higher end pens. And there's really a whole section of the fountain pen community that are enthusiastic about dupes. I don't feel one way or another about them. I had a Jin Hao, had several Jin Hao 82s, which is another Chinese company that makes dupes and I like them just fine. I ended up gifting them, but I thought they were great. But more on the whole dupe situation later. Let's do a little pen doodle comparison. I will say like while I was using the pen that I found it to be really reliable and I didn't have any hard starts or any problems with the pen and I actually was surprised by how much I enjoyed reaching for it and writing with it. So this is Tamoy River Paper. This is in my ink journal. I do have a video flipping through the beginning of this ink journal and some currently ink videos that I'll leave linked for you below, but this is postable. I did forget to mention that and it's comfortable posted or not. And so like even doing these little writing tests, like what do I even write? Do I just write Archer Nova Fountain Pen? Do I write a fine nib? Fine nib question mark? I don't know. But the ink in here right now is Diamine Salamander. And we do get a little bit of feedback but it's really nice. If you don't know what feedback is, that's kind of the feeling. Think about whenever you're writing with a pencil and you can kind of feel the texture of the paper as you're writing. That's kind of what feedback is. So you can really be glassy smooth or you can have a ton of feedback and people say scratchy, but it's not really scratchy. It's just being able to feel the texture on the nib. And so this one is somewhere in between. Okay, and so this is on Tomoy River paper, super fountain pen friendly. I actually have not used the pen in an Archer and Olive notebook. So this should be interesting. If I had to guess, I think it's gonna be fine because this is a fine nib, but I would venture to say that if they made thicker nibs, even a medium nib, the performance would be a little bit different. But let's check it out here. Yeah, it's, it's what I expected. It's fine. You get a little more feedback 
it's not as smooth and I don't know, just in, it's more enjoyable on this Tamoy River paper. And I don't know if you can see, I'll try to hold it up to this other camera, but you kind of see the difference, same ink, same pen. See the difference in the ink color. You just have a little more shading, a little more of the true color coming out in the Tamora River paper. So with the Archer and Olive paper, you are losing ink properties. And that's honestly the reason why I'm not in an Archer and Olive notebook as my main planner right now. But let's look at these inks and just see if we can really bring out the difference here. So let's start with the Tamoy River paper. I only have two of the Archer and Olive inks. I grabbed them on a buy sell trade and I'm still waiting on the third one, but the colors are similar enough and we can get the gist of what's happening with these two inks. And so here again, we have the stickers on top, which is great, especially whenever you have your inks in drawers, it's nice to be able to pick out what's what, but we don't have any names, which for inks is wild. Again, market research people, like we have to have the ink color names. <laughs> we have to. All right, so we are going to swatch this mysterious green on the Tamoy River paper first. And I do wanna say, that the bottles are super cute. I like this sticker here. And I'm sure it does say on the box how many milliliters are in here, but it definitely needs to say that on the bottle. We need a name. Those are my complaints there. Okay, so here is this lovely green. It's funny because I think I was more worried about the inks being just super thick or just not great, but I think they are pretty legit. I have not tried them in any other fountain pen, but there's no reason that it wouldn't work, so to speak. It worked just fine in this. I do have this little dip pen. This is the only dip pen that I have in reach, so let's go with this. It's a super tiny little thing, but this is A and O green, I'm just calling it. I think I've called it green one in my like spreadsheet of inks. So yeah, it's just a very nice medium green. And funny enough, I did not have anything really like super similar to this in my collection. I did have some with some shimmer and some other properties, but nothing really super close to this that was a standard ink. Which brings me to, I wonder what an Archer and Olive shimmer situation would be like. If you guys are watching this and are thinking about it, like a subtle shimmer would be lovely. Don't go too overboard though, so we can use them in these fine nibs. Okay, let's, this is the main one that I was writing with the last couple of weeks and I love this color. Oop, God, I, I just love a, a good teal. Actually, I'm gonna suck a little bit of this up so we don't get too crazy with the dark values. So I've been calling this one a and Teal. I just think that's a really pretty color and it does have just a little bit of shading here. You can see some light values in there and some darker values, which is really pretty. Okay, as that's drying, let's go ahead and do the same thing in the Archer and Olive 160 GSM paper. See, we just right off the bat get a lot more pooling and like this feathering and bruising. So that's immediately something to think about for them if they ever plan on doing anything broader than a fine. 
because you can see that it ain't doing. We're not getting the same type of swatch here. We're just gonna continue and then we'll do a comparison. And again, let's suck up some of this pooling because the ink just does not behave the same here. So we still may not get those different values. Okay, I am gonna spend a little bit more time on this paper just because this is the art journal of paper. So let's flip it over and we do have bleed through even onto the next page, of course, ghosting, which is totally fine. But this bleed through, especially this is just not okay. And that's why I've been doing some work with Ferris Wheel Press and I do use this notebook for those writing samples, but when I know that I'm gonna be doing swatches like this, I do it on another sheet of paper and then paste it in here just because I wanna be able to get all of the ink properties to show up. Now, if I'm writing with a finer, like this is an extra fine nib that I use for this, I think that's fine. That passes and looks good. If I use a broader nib, like this is a broad nib, then things just don't look as lovely, as polish. Things are more likely to feather. The other paper is just about done, but here is a comparison, and I think this comparison will be a telltale sign of what I think is the biggest issue. And this is still drying. It's only got a little a little bit of drying left to go there. But even so, this is perfectly dry and we can see different shading properties. We can see just more character here with this green color compared to this where it's just kind of a flat looking color. Same with this teal. Look how pretty some of these dark areas are. There's even a little bit of sheen in there too, I think. I just think this is so gorgeous and so pretty even in the writing here. And we just lose everything on the Artronol of paper. Show it up close here, just in case. This is the Tamoy River paper. And then this is the Archer and Olive paper. So yeah, I, I would still say that the Arch and Olive paper is fountain pen friendly. However, with a little asterisk on it, like with fine nibs, like you couldn't make an Arch and Olive notebook, your swatch journal, and really have a good idea of how the inks are gonna perform. So that sort of leads me to this question, if this goes well, Will we get new art journal of paper? I actually have like a list of maybe rhetorical questions. With this new paper in mind or additional paper, maybe they offer the 160 GSM paper alongside a more fountain pen friendly paper. So with that in mind, would that be more of a pivot? Just considering the amount of energy needed to appeal to fountain pen users. You gotta think about all of the things that I mentioned with the inks, like what would a shimmer ink look like? What would a sheening ink look like? What would different colors, different resins, different nib sizes even look like on an Artronola fountain pen? This is really an industry where quality and quality control is such an important aspect. And so I just wonder if they're aware of all of that. And are they intending to be a fountain pen entry point with releasing this pen? Or are they just hopping on a trend? But really, like, will it even be popular enough with their audience to live beyond the subscription box, which is where they typically try new products. This is where they test the waters. So... I'd be curious about your thoughts down in the comments. Those were just the questions that I kind of had ruminating as I was using this pen and using the inks and definitely after swatching this stuff, like what is the intent here? But my thoughts, let's talk about kind of my final thoughts and wrap this up. So I do think this is a great fountain pen overall 
for an introduction into the hobby. I think this would be a lovely gift set for someone that is maybe curious about fountain pens. I wouldn't gift them this fountain pen set and an Archer and Olive notebook because that kind of limits their ability to explore swatching, explore painting with fountain pen inks. You just don't get that experience here with the Archer and Olive paper. But the look and feel is definitely more elegant compared to a lot of other beginner fountain pens, like compared to the Ferris wheel carousel even, which I don't have any right now because I've gifted them all. But compared to that Ferris wheel carousel, which seems like a similar entry point, I think this pen is better than that. But I do think that this pen cannot be expensive. If it goes beyond the subscription box, it should not be expensive. It should be $20, $30 max, but I would say $20 US. Now, I did go on a hunt once I saw the Winsong Niv. I did go on a hunt and I found almost the exact same pen on Amazon for around 13 to $16, depending on the color. So it just makes my ears perk up a little bit, it, especially if I'm not into Chinese dupes or lower quality pens. So just something to keep in mind. I do think it was a good call to do this in a sub box first. And really the biggest issue to me is trying to pair this pen, these inks, any other fountain pen that people may get into after trying this, pairing that with this paper, I just think is the biggest issue to me. And that shouldn't be the case for a notebook brand. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't the worst paper that I've ever tried fountain pen inks on or a fountain pen on. Like there's plenty of other bank papers and copy papers that don't even take a fine fountain pen. So it's not the worst experience out there, but I just feel like they aren't capitalizing on the fountain pen experience. And I just, just noticed this. It feels like the logo should be the opposite way. I don't know. Anyways, if you have this pen, I'd love for you to share your experience with it below. Are you down for more Archer and Olive fountain pens or do you think this was a complete flop? I want to know. If you want to see all the pens and inks I have in rotation right now, I'll leave my latest currently ink video for you here. Don't forget to subscribe. Definitely like this video if you've made it this far and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.